Hello everyone and welcome. Uh, today I'm really excited to show you a new plugin for the Omniverse uh, environment. So what this is, is the UE4 Omniverse plugin. And what it allows us to do primarily at this point is import and export assets uh, to and from the Omniverse. Uh, so we basically are going to be converting assets out from Unreal and going into the Omniverse where we can op open them there and look at them with path tracing. And we're going to be able to s open virtually every asset that we have that's a USD within the Unreal environment as well. So that alone is just uh, remarkably awesome. And uh, let's go ahead and get started with reviewing the plugin. Okay. So as you can see at the top here, I have a icon that's telling me my username and I have the ability to connect or open my connection information and I can go into live edit mode. I'll, I'll explain live edit mode in a little bit, uh, but we can go and do basically live uh, manipulation, which will live sync to the Omniverse. And um, if you had other tools that were working with it, they could see your updates live as you're working. Okay, so that's a really cool feature. Okay, anyway, so let's go into our connection. And as you can see here, I'm, I'm signed in. I'm just going to go ahead and sign out just so you can see what you will probably see the first time you launch the Omniverse plugin is you're going to get this Omniverse connection is lost, right? And it's going to give you the opportunity to reconnect since I already have have connected. But normally you won't even see that, or if you do, it won't do anything. Um, so what you would want to do is just go up to this panel right here and go to connection and sign in. Okay, and once you're signed into an Omniverse server, that message will go away. And now you know you can start working or you're, you're reliably able to work. Okay, so now once that's done, we can also go ahead and look at our settings. Okay, so let's go to settings and let's go to project settings. And inside of project settings, when it launches, there it is. Okay, inside of project settings, uh, way down here in the plugins, you should see that we have the Omniverse plugin available. And in here, we can go ahead and do a couple different things. This is mostly going to be fine at defaults, uh, but you might want to be able to add your MDL templates. Like, for example, uh, you know, here you can add any location you wanted to search for MDL uh, template paths. And uh, we can turn on experimental features. We can do developer logs. There's a couple different other options in here. Okay, but for the most part, we're just going to leave that alone, um, especially for now. Okay, uh, and I just wanted to bring your attention to the fact that you can edit the plugins through this menu. Okay, so there we go. Now that I'm actually connected, what we didn't really even realize is that automatically we got this folder right here from the Omniverse, which was because of this connection. So once it made this connection, it connected to the Omniverse and it said, okay, give me the Omniverse assets that exist in my Omniverse and plug them right into my, into my Unreal uh, engine. Okay, so if we look through here, this is all of, you know, this is this is my Omniverse. Okay, so I can go in here and look for my user pkind. Oh, I could do this. So I'll go pki, I can probably find it here. Yep, there we go. So pkind. And now I can see any asset that I've created inside my Omniverse is going to be listed here. So let's go ahead and try opening up a USD. So inside of this uh, folder here, I'm going to find a file called three paths three paths. And inside of here, I'm going to open up this file called three paths variant. Now, all this is is a USD and it's actually a pretty complex USD. It's got USDs feeding it from other locations. So this is a pretty complex scene inside of um, inside of the USD format. So this is not even just a simple scene. This is a fairly complex one. So let's go ahead and open this up. And what we'll see happens is that entire scene comes in right here into Unreal. And in this specific case, this wouldn't really be that very useful. We wouldn't normally work this way. Uh, but it does show the power of just what we can import uh, just directly as a USD right into uh, Unreal. Now, the reason we wouldn't want to work this way is because this is going to be all encapsulated into an actor. Okay, so we would probably want to you know, separate everything out and export them each individually in, just like you would like a normal game. This would be kind of like sending everything in one shot from any DCC tool, and you wouldn't really want to work that way inside of Unreal, uh, or at least not necessarily. Anyway, um, but it does show that, you know, anything comes through, even complex USDs can bring everything that they need right into the engine, and uh, it just comes in flawlessly, materials and all, uh, with literally touching nothing. 
okay so pretty pretty cool um i think that's uh pretty awesome so uh so great stuff right there okay so the next thing we might want to be able to do is um export stuff right we want to be able to take things out of unreal 2 and bring them into the omniverse so let's go ahead and explore that path now so for the first let's just go to my root content directory and i'm gonna have to get rid of this pki and i'm gonna go into starter content and i'm gonna go to maps and i'm gonna open up the minimal default map okay and don't save wonderful okay so here i have the minimal default map we all know and love right this is standard ue4 default map now um in order to get this to go to the omniverse it's actually a pretty straightforward thing because we do a whole bunch of magic underneath okay so watch what we're going to do here is we're just going to go right click we're going to go export to omniverse we can pretty much leave everything alone unless you have special use cases and we're just going to hit okay now when we do that we can go ahead and now locate a location on our um, omniverse server so i'm just going to grab my pkind folder again i'm going to right click i'm going to go new folder i'm going to call this um I don't know, UE4 scene test, right? And I'm gonna open that up. Oops, UE4 scene test. I'm gonna open this up and I'm gonna send it out. So I'm gonna go UE4 underscore scene test, okay? And I'm gonna hit save. And now it's gonna bundle all the assets, materials that are in the scene and bind them all into your uh, USD file. So we'll now have a new USD file created that will hopefully emulate exactly what we see here in the scene. Let's go ahead and see when this completes. Okay, now that the export is complete, uh, we do see a couple errors, and these are just things that we probably aren't fully supporting yet, like this uh, panning sky is not fully supported yet, and uh, Material mesh instance dynamic that's probably uh, like a particle effect or something to that effect. So we have just a couple things that aren't, aren't fully supported yet inside of the export. Uh, but for the most part, we'll see that everything came across great. So let's go ahead and clear that error message and close that out. And now let's launch up kit. Okay, so now I'm just going to launch Omniverse kit. And once open, we can now sign in. And we can navigate to our content directory that we just saved to. So for me, I'm going to this pkind folder and I'm going to open up this UE4 scene test. Now inside of here, I have that asset that I just exported and I can open it. I'm going to go ahead and maximize and select my floor and hit F to focus. And here we can see that the pieces are still being loaded. So let's just let them load. There they come in. And as you can see, we now have all the assets imported and they all have their correct materials. Okay, so now that it's imported, let's go ahead and take a quick look at uh, what it gave us. So the first thing you might notice is that it came with this USD and it has this props folder and some materials. Okay, so let's go into the props folder quickly. And what you're going to see is that we have all of the assets uh, listed right here. So we can actually just open up the chair as well. And here we just have the chair asset alone. Okay, so this is just the chair by itself. Okay, so that's pretty neat that we can um, just kind of, you know, break down the scene and see all of the individual assets right there and uh, have access to them. And where that becomes extremely useful is that now this can just be pushed right into Maya and you can edit it live there. And then that can be pushed right to your um, unreal scene. So, um, really, really kind of powerful and cool, uh, when you start to realize the capabilities that this unfolds. So, um, so yeah, this USD scene is really just this USD scene. Sorry. Uh, let me go back to the floor is really just comprised of these props, which are now nested into this USD scene. So just kind of interesting how usd can just swallow another usd and it's like a hey, okay so um so cool all right so then also inside of here is a uh, set of materials and these are all the materials that are used to create the scene and they've all been cons converted to mdl as you can see um and are useful anywhere else inside of omniverse now okay so backing back out um let's just take one last look 
at uh, what we can do to kind of make the scene a little bit better and see how we can make use of this inside of Omniverse. All right, so um, let's uh, kind of build up a use case here. So maybe we want this to be a nice rendering and we want to have it look really good. Okay, so that'll just be a really simplified use case. Uh, so let's go ahead and um, just create a simple box. So create geometry cube. Let's go ahead and scale this up. And you'll notice that that little bit of error that was kind of happening here in the glass is disappearing. And that's because now it doesn't look out to infinity. Um, it's just kind of an error if you're looking out into a world that has absolutely nothing behind it. So, uh, so that's why that red error kind of was there. Um, so yeah, just something to know. All right, so now we've got a little world for this thing to start reflecting off of. RTX coming into play right there, looking really quite lovely. And now let's go ahead and create a light. So let's go ahead and create a sphere light and drag this into position. And it's a little bright, but we're just going for a quick demo, so we're not too concerned. Um, let's set that intensity down a bit though. It's a little out of control. Okay, yeah, that's a little nicer. And now we say, okay, so we've got a nice little scene. Let's get a really good render of it. Well, we just go to path traced and voila. We have wonderful path tracing of all of your assets that used to exist in Unreal or still exist in Unreal. Pretty uh, remarkably cool, in my opinion. Okay, so I'm going to close down Kit for a moment, and I'm going to show you a workflow directly from Maya into Unreal, but we're going to do it kind of interestingly. So first of all, let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and open up uh, a scene. So I'm going to go back to this scene that I started with earlier. There's three paths, and I'm going to open up this three paths variant. Okay, and I'm going to open that back up again. Now, once we have this opened up. I had said earlier that I wanted to show you a little bit about live mode. And as you can see here, I have it enabled. So let me just show you how that works. So right now I have it live edit off and I'm going to turn it live edit on. OK, so now I am live editing this asset. OK, so if I were to open this up with any other toolkit utilizing the Omniverse plugin, uh, we can actually have one to one integration with it. All right, so I want to give you an example of how that could work. And I'm going to purposely avoid Omniverse kit for the moment. But Omniverse Kit could also be a position that we could send to. Uh, but in this case, I want to show you what we could do with the Maya plugin. Okay, so here we're using another DCC tool, totally different DCC tool. And what we're going to do is we're going to be using the Omniverse Nucleus as our go between to get from Maya to Unreal. Okay, so this is really cool. And uh, I just wanted to show you a little bit of this and uh, what, what the promise is that this kind of here offers. And I think you'll be able to see right away how powerful this can be. All right, so now I am in Maya, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm simply going to wait for it to load up first of all. Then once my Omniverse is loaded, I'm gonna open up my Omniverse panel and bring it on screen. And now I'm gonna go ahead and sign in and uh, sign in, wait for it to load. Great. Okay, so now that I'm signed in, I'm just going to go ahead and hit Live Sync, and I'm going to go File, and I'm going to go Open USD. Okay, so now I'm going to open another file inside my Omniverse uh, Nucleus, and it's going to be the same one that we just launched inside of Unreal. So I'm going to go to Three Paths, and inside of here I should find my Three Paths variant, USD, and I'm going to hit Open. Once the scene loads, which it should do pretty quickly. Mind you, I'm doing this all over a, uh, a quite a distant connection. This is not a local area connection that I'm dealing with the Omniverse through. This is all uh, remote. So this is a, a real world user experience here as far as the, uh, the connection goes. So that's kind of nice to know that this is not like some super high speed, perfect situation. This is, this is real, you know, this is just the cable modem using uh, Omniverse, okay? So now I've got the object loaded here in Maya, and it's looking a little funky, so I'm just gonna fix my cameras quick, uh, just because my clipping planes are not really where they need to be. So I'm gonna just set this one to one, 
And I'm going to set this one to 10,000, and that should get rid of our jitter. Okay, yeah, well, not quite. Maybe I need a little more. And let's try that. That should do it. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so now I've gotten rid of my jitter because I've got my clipping plan set up properly. Uh, that's just a little issue with Maya that we kind of know happens. Okay, so in here, I want to now, again, set this to live sync. Make sure that the live sync is enabled. And you do have to have this panel open. It's really important that you leave this panel open. As soon as you close this panel, it will kill the live sync. So that's something just to keep understood. Now, I'm just going to move this off screen so that I don't have the opportunity of accidentally clicking it. So just know that my panel is open. It's just uh, on my other monitor. OK, so now that I've got this mesh open here and I've got my scene open here in Unreal, uh, what I can do is I can actually live edit as I go. All right, so I'm just going to go back to, you know, let's see if I can get this looking decently on left and right monitors in a way that kind of can show what I'm showing here. Uh, there we go. I'm just going to squeeze this out a little bit and squeeze this over a little bit. So we have Unreal on the left and it's really squeezed. I'm sorry about that. It's just the way I've got to deal with it. I don't have enough uh, ability to show too much monitor space here. So bear with me a little bit, but I think you'll get the idea right away. And mind you that this does not have to be done by a singular user, nor does it have to be just one connection. This could be multiple uh, connections going into the Omniverse. This is just an example of two applications with one user, but we could potentially have multiple users with multiple connections um, working on the same project at the same time. Anyway, uh, without further ado, so now I'm going to go ahead and grab this object and I'm going to move it, right? And over here in Unreal, we see that it live updated, okay? So wherever I move this object, that goes with it, okay? So pretty awesome that we have like live edit right here, um, right through Omniverse. Now that's cool, uh, no doubt. Let me undo that, and we should find that this file is back. Great. Now, you might think, well, that's cool that I can move stuff, but like, what if I were to go ahead and create a new object, right? So would that work? And the answer is, yeah, it sure does. So let's just create that object, move it into place somewhere over here, and as you can see, it was created here in Unreal, okay? So um, needless to say, that's pretty, pretty awesome. And... Uh, I'm certainly excited to see this feature uh, coming to life. So super cool stuff. So that more or less wraps up the, uh, the entirety of the Omniverse UE4 plugin. Uh, but I did want to just cover one last thing. So I had shown that you could export an entire scene, uh, but you can also export individual elements and uh, materials. So just be aware that you can do that and you do it in exactly the same way. So if I go into this uh, blower asset, for example, I can just right click on the material, right click and say export to Omniverse. And the same thing would be true just for this uh, USD file. And now again, this is just a really complex USD file. This is just a simple one, but of course this one can be sent as well. All right, so that should pretty much wrap up um, all that you need to know about getting started with the Unreal Engine plugin for Omniverse Nucleus. All right, thank you so very much, and I hope you enjoy this as much as I do. All right, have a great day. Bye-bye.